From the vibrant, art-filled cities of Helsinki and Turku to the depths of the boreal forests and the thinly inhabited outer archipelago, Finland offers a wealth of attractions and beautiful places to visit. It's also a relatively unknown corner of Europe, likely because it is so far from the mainstream tourist routes. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated attractions and places to visit in Finland. And just wait till you see what's at the top two, something you may not even have thought of. So make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So let's cut to the chase. At 10, Porvu. The country's second oldest town, Porvu, is 48 kilometers east of Helsinki. It rises from a picturesque riverfront lined with little red wooden buildings, through a charming tangle of old streets and ochre-colored wooden houses to its hilltop medieval cathedral. Highlights here are the ornate 1764 pulpit and wall paintings from the 15th century. Between the river and the hilltop cathedral is the market square with two museums worth visiting. One has exhibits on local history and the other, the Edelfelt Valgrem Museum, is of particular interest to those fascinated by the Art Nouveau movement. It features the furniture, ceramics and other works of several artists who formed an art colony here at the turn of the 20th century. Porvu is still known for its fine crafts, so allow time for browsing the shops and studios. In the summer, you can visit Porvu from Helsinki by boat. Not in the winter though, could be a bit icy. At 9, Turku. The southwestern Finnish town of Turku, the country's oldest town and until 1812 its capital, lies on the Gulf of Bothnia at the mouth of the Arujoki River. Turku lies in the area where the successors to the Swedish Vikings landed in the 12th century and set out to conquer what is now Finland. With eight centuries of history, it is today the most traditional medieval town in Finland, but in addition to its outstanding medieval buildings, you'll find examples of Art Nouveau and modern architecture, such as the Sibelius Museum by Voldemar Beekman. The river is a focal point for the city, lined with historic boats, some of which have been converted into restaurants. In the summer, locals gather along its banks in the evening and in the winter, it becomes a giant skating rink, hopefully not skating on thin ice. On the northeast side of the river is the commercial centre with the Kalpatori Market Square, shopping centre and lovely Orthodox Church. On the opposite bank, the medieval cathedral, consecrated in 1290, rises above the old Great Square. It is a massive brick church in late Romanesque style with Gothic and Renaissance additions and a massive 97 metre high tower which dominates the city. During the Midsummer Medieval Festival, the Old Square's ensemble of historic buildings regains its medieval air with craft stalls and food vendors. Just down from the cathedral along the river, the two old sailing ships are moored, the Suomen Jeltsen, now a trainee school for seamen, and the Saigin, the last remaining wooden bark used for sea trade. Both are open to the public in summer. Nearer the harbour is Turku Castle, built around 1300 on what was then an island at the mouth of the river. It was enlarged to the 16th to 17th century and now houses the Turku Historical Museum. For a look at what Turku looked like in the early 1800s, stroll through the streets of the Luostermanaki Handicrafts Museum, an entire neighbourhood of 40 homes, the only ones saved in the fire that destroyed Turku in 1827. Preserved as a museum village, its homes and workshops now house artisans who demonstrate period crafts. Next up, at 8, Arland Archipelago. The Arland Islands, or Arland, are an autonomous archipelago between Sweden and Finland. A predominantly Swedish-speaking province of Finland, Arland is comprised of a few large islands and nearly 10,000 smaller ones. Yes, 10,000! Arland has a unique history. It was ceded to Russia by Sweden in 1809. In 1854, a combined British-French fleet took the islands, destroying the fortress. After that, the entire archipelago was demilitarized and remains so to this day. About 27,500 people live in Arland, with about 11,000 in the main town of Mariham. 
The main industry on the islands has always been shipping and trade, so the Maritime Museum, the museum ship Pomern and the Maritime Quarter in Marihan are worth seeing to understand the island's fascinating maritime history. Also worth a visit is the Jan Karlsgarden Open Air Museum in Kastelholm, where you can see what a typical island farm looked like around 1890. However, the big draw to Ireland these days is its unspoiled nature and beautiful landscapes. On Midsummer's Eve, Ireland holds a massive and ancient celebration marking the longest day of the year. The lovely landscapes and seascapes make it a favourite with artists and their studios and galleries are popular with tourists who arrive by boat from Turku and Stockholm. At 7, watch the very famous Northern Lights. For most people, seeing these blazing curtains of light drape across the sky is a once-in-a-lifetime treat. Finland is one of the best places in the world to see the Northern Lights. Although at times, the lights can be seen even in the southernmost regions of the nation, the best place to see them is in the region close to or north of the Arctic Circle. Here, between September and March, visitors are almost guaranteed a show if the sky is clear. A wide range of hotels in the north cater specifically to people wanting to see the lights. Also, the Finnish Meteorological Institute allows you to sign up for free Northern Lights email alerts. At 6, shop and browse in Helsinki's Design District. The epicentre of modern Scandinavian design, Helsinki has an entire district devoted to studios, galleries and even antique shops dedicated to Finnish designers and their work. Whether you're shopping or just looking, a few hours in these neighbourhoods is a chance to experience this vibrant facet of Finnish arts and culture. Design District Helsinki brings together creative people in the central neighbourhoods of Punavuri, Kartin Kapunki, Kampi and Ulalina, where you'll find boutiques, galleries and studios devoted to contemporary designs in fashion, jewellery, furnishings, tableware and everyday items. Along with the shops, you can arrange visits to some designer studios such as Raka Ra, organic pottery, and Paja, artisan jewellery, to see craftspeople at work. Contact them through the Design District website. You'll also find shops specialising in design-driven antiques and vintage Finnish designs such as Art.fi and Artec Second Cycle. For an overview and a great shop, visit the Design Forum Finland on Erota Jankatu, which showcases the best of Finnish design in everything from dishes to paper clips. To see how Finnish design and craftsmanship have developed and see some outstanding examples from the past, visit the Design Museum in the Kartin Kaupunki neighborhood. At 5, go skiing or ride a dog sled. My favorite. In the winter, the Arctic region is a paradise for skiers and others who love snow and ice sports. You can ride across frozen lakes and visit Sami villages on a dog sled safari, learn to drive your own reindeer sled, snowshoe or cross-country ski for miles, as you do, and watch the spectacular northern lights. Downhill skiers should head about 170 kilometers north and presumably up a bit of Rona Niemi to Levi, a center for all winter recreation with miles of scenic Nordic ski trails lighted for night skiing. So are the pistes and slopes of Finland's largest downhill ski area. Many hotels at Levi have rooms with glass ceilings so you can watch the northern lights from inside and no, no skiers running over the top. The comfortable Levi Hotel Spa is a five-minute walk from the ski resort where you can rent equipment and presumably some snowshoes. Right at the resort hotel, you'll find saunas, swimming pools, outdoor hot tubs, bowling and a kid's play area. Next up at four, Helsinki Churches. Three of the top places to visit in Helsinki are churches, Two of them cathedrals and a third, a landmark of modern architecture, Artspensky Orthodox Cathedral, rises dramatically above the east side of the harbour. It's 13 green-topped spires ending in gold cupolas. This is Western Europe's largest Orthodox church, its interior glowing with gold, icons, crosses, altars and intricately decorated arches. The cathedral serves Helsinki's large Russian population and visitors are welcome. 
On the hill directly behind the harbour and an equally visible landmark to those approaching Helsinki by sea, the huge neoclassical Lutheran Cathedral is so close and so large that it appears to be standing on the roofs of the harbour front buildings. The tall green dome and broad steps of the early 19th century cathedral from the majestic focal point of Senate Square. The buildings facing the square complete a harmonious enclosure, one of Europe's most beautiful public squares. It is used frequently for celebrations and as the starting point of parades. In December, the entire square is filled with booths selling beautiful local crafts and holiday foods. While these two cathedrals are firmly in the traditions of their denomination, Tempeliorchio Church is an architectural experiment carved into solid rock on a relatively small space in the centre of the city. Architects Timo and Tuomo Sumolainen designed the church, covering it with a rounded woven copper roof supported by concrete spokes. The acoustic created by the combination of copper and stone are remarkable, making this a popular venue for musical concerts of all styles. And now into the top three, at three, Rovaniemi and the Arctic. The Arctic Circle runs across northern Finland, right through the town of Rovaniemi, giving it claim to being the gateway to the Arctic. In the summer, this means the famous midnight sun. While the sun only stays above the horizon for a full 24 hours in Rovaniemi on the summer solstice in late June, from late May to early August it never drops far enough for it to get dark. Locals are out enjoying their great outdoors throughout these white nights and welcome tourists to join them. Rovaniemi is in the centre of a vast natural area of rushing rivers for canoeing, swimming or fishing, with trails alongside them for hiking and cycling. The city is best known, ask any Finnish child, as the home of Santa Claus, right astride the Arctic Circle at Santa Claus Village. You can meet reindeer here, maybe even Rudolf, and visit a Sami reindeer farm. To learn more about the Lapland culture and about the natural history, meteorology and geology of the Arctic, visit the stunning Arcticum Science Museum. At 2, Kalpatori, Market Square and Esplanadi. Helsinki's harbour is an integral part of the city whose important landmarks overlook it. It's also a popular gathering point with an open-air market of local farmers, craftsmen, food producers and fishermen who sell directly from their boats. You may catch the fragrance of salmon cooking over cedar planks beside the boats and, depending on the season, see a rainbow of glistening ripe berries or baskets of foraged woodland mushrooms. The historic 1889 Market Hall shelters more food vendors, but the outdoor market is a year-round tradition protected by tarps and tents in the winter. Stretching from one side of the market square, the open swathe of the Esplanade is where the entire city seems to congregate on summer evenings. The tree-lined promenade is bordered by elegant buildings and a pavilion houses the Capelli restaurant, whose terrace is especially popular on summer evenings when there are concerts in the bandstand. A fountain, another work by Eliel Sarinen, supports a statue of Havis Amanda, Helsinki's symbol. Helsinki's most unusual museum, the Street Museum, climbs from Market Square to Senate Square, a one-block progression from the early 1800s to the 1930s, with paving surfaces, street lights, mailboxes and phone booths changing with each era. And finally, at number one, Suomenlinna Fortress. One of the world's largest sea fortresses, the 18th century fort on Suomenlinna is a 15-minute ferry ride from Helsinki's Market Square, a mini-cruise that has lovely views of the city as a bonus attraction. The main point of interest is the fortress castle, whose construction was begun in 1748 during an era of Swedish rule, originally named Sviborg. In 1808, troops surrendered the fortress to invading Russians, and its condition deteriorated over the following century. Finally, after independence was regained in 1917, the Finns took control of the fortifications and began the slow process of restoring the landmark. It was an active submarine base during World War II, and today it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a popular tourist attraction. Begin with the audio-visual experience in the visitor centre, it's in English, for a lively history, then explore its ramparts, tunnels and museums and walk the trails around the beautiful island or sign up here for a guided walk to learn more about the fort and its various attractions. 
Among these are the 250-ton Vesico submarine, used by the Finnish Navy from 1936 until the end of World War II. The Erensvad Museum illustrates the earliest Swedish period, and the Doll and Toy Museum displays dolls, doll houses and toys in an old Russian villa. Various buildings house studios and shops of glassblowers, potters and other craftsmen, and in the summer you can stay for evening dance and musical performances of the Suomenlina Summer Theatre. And there you have the 10 top-rated attractions and places to visit in Finland. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. That's all for now. Until next time.